Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Butterfly Autumn Leaf and I'm sipping on some cinnamon spice tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks such as this one. So the painting that I did today is inspired by a photo that was sent in by one of my Patreon members by the name of Stephanie Ivanova. I have a benefit for my Patreon membership, my Patreon members, whereby every now and again, I'll put a call out for photos. They'll submit them. I'll select some of them and turn them into YouTube tutorials. And as a thank you to whoever submitted the photo, I send the original painting off to them. So I hope she enjoys it. Um, so if you're interested in learning how you two could submit your photo or learning more about the Patreon membership program where there's a whole bunch of other painting perks for you to enjoy. I have all of that information down below in the video description. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. Uh, for, I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt sienna, which I might call rust, raw sienna, which I'll probably call yellow, <laughs> fire red, marsh black, and burnt umber, which I'll call brown. <laughs> I just make up my own names of my colors as I go along. <laughs> and for my tools today, I've got a white piece of chalk that I'm gonna be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a one inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight and a number two round synthetic brushes. And I might call these small, medium, and large, or I'll just call them out by name as I go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna to wanna to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase from my shop things individually, like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting the base coat onto our canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna use are brown, burnt sienna, and yellow. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be applying the paint in a circular type of brush stroke, and I'm gonna be doing it in various, um, I'm gonna be alternating my colors. So I'll be doing some areas with brown, then I'll use some burnt sienna, then I'll use some yellow, and I'm just gonna be going for these really big kind of color splotches. It's gonna look scratchy, it's gonna look unfinished at this stage. We're gonna be doing another step to it on a future, um, on a future instruction in order to get it to look nice and beautiful. But right now it's just gonna be the base coat. So I'm gonna start with some brown paint on my brush and I'm gonna be putting these just large areas of brown paint on my canvas. So you can have fun with where you want to place them. You can place them kind of all over the place. You can place them in, in little areas or in big areas. It doesn't really matter at this point. I'm just kind of, um, for me, I am using a photo reference as my guide as to where to kind of put these darker spots. But as you're going through your process, you don't need to put them in the same exact formation. I'm just, I, me personally, I am utilizing a photo reference to kind of guide me through these, um, through these kind of um, color areas. But 
again, they don't have to be exactly as this. So once I've got my brown on there, I'm gonna pick up some burnt sienna and I'm gonna be putting some burnt sienna in. <laughs> again, it doesn't have to be the same as mine. You can even, uh, like I didn't wash my brush. You don't need to wash your brush throughout this process. You can get these colors to overlap. You can get them to be independent of one another. I'm getting them to kind of um, merge into one another, not over blending, not um, getting them to look like a solid color. It's okay if they're touching each other. I'm gonna have um, some some of the yellow intermingled with this in a in a in a few minutes. But right now, again, just kind of putting some burnt sienna on here. Again, I know it's gonna look scratchy at this point, um, but I'm okay with that because I know what my future steps <laughs> hold hold for me. And again, yours doesn't have to be in the same color placement as mine. We're gonna be adding additional colors on a future step. We're gonna add some red into it. We'll add more yellow into it. Um, we'll add some lighter tones that will almost resemble kind of a greenish hue to it. And then once I got this, I'm gonna start picking up yellow on my brush. And the yellow you can kind of overlap into your other areas. So yellow is gonna be kind of my connector color, if you will, in some of these areas, just to give myself different tone or different hues of the colors. So as I'm doing this, if I want to have a nice variety of these autumn tones, I love to layer. That's one of my biggest things that you can usually see crossover from in all of my paintings is my love for layering <laughs> because I just feel like it gives uh, it always gives such a nice organic look to to images. So that's where I like to head. And what I'm doing here is the areas where that didn't have yellow are going to have a brighter a brighter hue to them and the areas that had the brown and or the burnt sienna will have a little bit darker version to it but again i know that there's another step coming that's going to get these colors to really talk much better with each other but this initial step really just gives me a nice um an initial start to it layering it on giving myself the idea of where i want those darker, darker areas versus maybe the lighter yellow areas. And then once I've got this done, I'm just taking my brush with a really light pressure. I'm not pushing hard right now and just kind of um, blending, not a lot, but just kind of softening up maybe some of those scratchy marks. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are going to finish our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber, Raw Sienna, Red, and maybe a little bit of white. I haven't decided if I'm gonna use the white yet or not. So what I'm in essence gonna be doing is doing the same thing that I just did, only I'm doing a second coat in order to smooth it out I'm gonna be adding a little bit more red into it in order to make the autumn colors kind of pop a little bit more. And I'm gonna just soften it. So this will make it look like we are, this, this butterfly that we're gonna be painting and the one leaf that we're gonna be painting are really super close to the viewer. And when you take a photograph and you have that real close up object, everything behind it seems to be out of focus. So imagine that all of these little soft color variations and, and gradients that we're doing are out of focus autumn leaves. So we're just making these co a color pattern with the, um, with the nice autumn leaf colors. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of brown. Oh, and I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step, it'll be easier for you to do it that way. So I'm starting with some brown on my brush and I'm gonna be doing the same brush stroke, which is gonna be this circular type of brush stroke. I can do it right on top of what was that brown area, but I can also bring it on top of other areas as well. So if I have yellow behind there, it's gonna make it look like it's got a little bit of a yellowish kind of greenish type of a tone. My paint is a student grade paint, which is 
um, very transparent. So as I do this, it's gonna take on some of the colors underneath it. So that's why I love to layer because it allows me this these soft illusions to, to occur. So this was all the same color on top of brown, yellow, and burnt sienna, and you can see the different va variations that it creates. So I don't need to do brown over the whole entire canvas, but I'm gonna explore what I just did there elsewhere. So I know that I wanna have, um, my butterfly's gonna be in through here. I wanna have some nice kind of deep tones over in through here. So I'm just using that brown to enhance what I've already done, as well as maybe pull it out a little bit further or bring, you know, make it a, whatever intensity that I want it to be. So I'm gonna bring this up in through here. I see a little bit more of the brown coming on down in through here. So I'm gonna just allow for that to happen. I'm gonna add more colors on top of the, even on top of the brown as well as I go through this process. But right now, just kind of giving myself this uh, nice dark um, start, dark start <laughs> to, to this and show, showing myself all the areas that I want the, the darkness to happen. So I feel there's gonna be another real darker area in through here. And don't be afraid to go too dark. You can always add lightness to it as well, but the dark is what's gonna help um, give you those those deep pockets of dimension in in the painting. So don't don't be afraid of dark. <laughs> it's one of my favorite sayings to say in painting is don't be afraid of the dark because it, I think oftentimes we are as painters we want to keep it light and airy and you know cheerful looking and I think sometimes the dark tones can can scare us as um, as painters because we don't want it to to um, taint or to dull the mood or anything along that line. So uh, you just know you can always you can always lighten up um, areas if if need be. So a little bit of dark up and through here, and then again I'm just kind of traveling around where I want these these dark areas to definitely be be visible. And I again I don't have to stay exactly on what I did that first round. This is going to be in conjunction. It's going to be in addition to. It's going to be um, all just a second layer similar to the first, but not exactly the same. So it's a similar process. It's a similar brush stroke. But again, if if you want to have those those variations, allow for the this overlapping to occur, and it's going to make it look nice and soft. Again, my butterfly is coming right in through here, so I don't necessarily need to put, uh, make this part 100% perfect, but I do want to make sure that wherever my butterfly is going to overlap, that it, it is definitely has a nice layer on it. So that's pretty good for the for the brown. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt sienna, and I'm going to work my way towards the reds and the and and yellow because I am going to be using some um, red and yellow in this step as well. So my burnt sienna. I'm probably not going to do a ton of the burnt sienna um, because I I really want my my orange, my, I'm, I don't have orange, <laughs> my yellow and my red, which will in spots make orange tones. I want those to really pop. So I'm just gonna kind of put a little bit of this burnt sienna um, before I start uh, intermingling some really vibrant red and yellow tones. So this is looking pretty good up and through here. And again, your color pattern does not have to be exactly as mine. You feel free to make it in whatever way you want overlapping that in through there maybe put a little bit more down in through here so now I'm going to start picking up red when I do this red again I don't need to wash my brush I can just pick up some red and say okay I want want a little bit of red in through here I don't want this to scream red 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 so as I'm doing this I know again that it's going to be on top of these darker tones it's going to allow for uh, the red, it again, is also transparent, so as it is drying, it's going to take on some of those reddish, or some of the tones that are underneath it. So I know that all of that is going to occur, so I'm not um, terribly concerned that it's going to be too vibrant, but if you have a red that is 
you know, less, oh, le less transparent than mine is, you can certainly be more cautious with the, with the quantity that you put on. But again, you can overlap it right on top of some of your brown. You can overlap it on top of some of that burnt sienna. As I'm doing this, I am pretty mindful of um, not over painting, which means I'm allowing for the, um, like that brown layer that I had done. That's just about dry at this point. So I'm safe to just kind of lightly rub on a, another layer on top of it. But if that, um, if that layer was still super wet, I would definitely um, be a little cautious that I didn't lift the paint right off the canvas. So I'm also not pressing hard with my brush. Um, and that's allowing uh, me to have, uh, to be more safe and to not, not run the risk of lifting that paint right off. So if your paint is really wet and you keep um, going in the same area, you may run the risk of pulling the paint off of the canvas. So just, you know, be mindful of that. And if you want to um, kind of let the, the canvas dry a little bit more in between you doing your swirling marks, you can certainly do that. And then this looks pretty good to me, maybe a little bit more red in through here. And then I'm gonna start incorporating yellow. So when you're, when you're starting to incorporate the yellow, if you feel that you need to wash your brush, you certainly could, but I'm gonna start with a little bit of yellow. And if I feel I need to um, go into or wash my brush, I certainly will do that. And again, I'm gonna do the same, the same process. My yellow has a little bit better opacity in it which means you can't see through it as well as you can see through my brown and my red and my burnt sienna. So as I'm doing this, I'm able to kind of lighten up some of these areas because I know that my, my yellow has a little bit of opacity in it. So as you're going through your process, if you're finding you know, that a similar thing is occurring with your paint and you like it, great. If you don't like it, then you can certainly use a different type of yellow. Like um, my, I have a variation or a variety of yellows. Like I use deep yellow, which doesn't tend to, uh, it has less opacity to it. I use that on some paintings and that will, um, if I use that on here, you would be able to see through it better. You would be able to um, kind of get those redder tones to to pop a little, you know, or to be a little bit deeper and richer, but I want to have some lightness in here. So that's why I'm, uh, I'm using my, my raw Sienna to help create those, those lighter kind of tones throughout this. And again, I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot, just really saying, Oh, okay, I want a lighter area in through here. So I'm using that, um, that yellow to to accomplish that if you did something and you're like whoa that's too yellow just pick up a touch of red and you can that'll give give you almost an orange tone in through that area so again you don't have to once you do something it's not the end of it you, it's not like you can't go back into a previous color you can certainly continue to to tweak these as much as you want the yellow and the red is going to make a really pretty orange type of tone. So if you, you could even use them together if you wanted to. So don't feel again, like you, you can't merge or use those other tones as well. I'm going to put, and again, I have a big, huge leaf coming up in through here. So uh, the areas where I know I'm going to be having lots of other information overlapping them, I don't have to go super invasive with them. Um, I just want to make sure that I get them done. I just picked up a little bit more red. So right now on this, at this moment, I'm kind of flipping back and forth between my yellow and my red. Um, just giving myself my light areas where I want that, the lighter versions to pop. Or if I want, uh, just a lighter version of red per se, I can use, um, the red and the yellow at the same time and it's going to give me a different hue to that and it's going to allow me to have this softer appearance um, occur. And at any time if you felt, oh I want to put some more burnt sienna or brown, just keep alternating those colors and getting it to be in whatever out of focus 
um, display is pleasing to your eye. I feel like I need another little coat in through here, so I'm going to pick up some uh, of my, oops, that was a little white on my brush. I didn't want that yet. A <laughs> little bit of um, brown and a touch of yellow. You can turn, you know, some of these brownish areas if you put the, um, if you just use the the yellow and the brown, you may end up with a little bit of a greenish hue, which is really nice as well. I'm gonna do that over here with a little bit of yellow and my brown. So you can take both of those and put them together and it's gonna give you almost um, just a really neutral, natural type of tone within um, within that, that display. And then I'm just gonna kind of keep fiddling here with a little bit of my brown and my yellow, give myself maybe another layer over in through here. And you can do this process as many layers as you want. So as you're going through this, if you're saying, oh, it's still a little scratchy looking, I wanna smooth it out a little bit more, just let it dry and do one more layer on top of it, which might be where I take mine. I haven't decided yet. I'll probably let mine dry and then make that decision um, once I see what it looks like when it's dry. Um, but once you've got yours done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using our drawing utensil for the next step. So you just wanna make sure that you've got a nice second coat over the entire canvas. It, like this looks a little scratchy for me, so I'd probably go and do another. This was brown and uh, yellow, picked them up at the same time. Just gave myself another little light layer on top of that just to kind of smooth it out to, to a place that is pleasing to my eye. And then I will be, um, once I've got this done, I'm going to put this large brush away, take out a drawing utensil, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our butterfly and our leaf. I'm gonna be using my chalk to do my drawing. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that is comfortable to you. I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers. We're gonna connect those markers. And by the time we're done, we're gonna have a nice basic shape or a couple of shapes <laughs> that we'll be able to utilize during the painting in process. So we're not going for any fine-tuned detail, just some nice, large shapes that we are using to place our objects and to make any little adjustments if we feel they are necessary before we start painting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find myself the center of my canvas, top to bottom, left to right. So for me, the center of my canvas falls somewhere right about there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be drawing the shape for the butterfly's body first, and then we'll do the wings, and then we'll do our leaf. So I'm gonna come to the right of here about an inch and a half, and then down about an inch and a half, give myself a marker. This is gonna be the tip of the tail. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go straight up from here, I would say maybe about four, four and a half inches, and then I'm gonna go over, well maybe a little bit higher than that, something right around here, and then go over to the right almost an inch. So this is, or maybe about a half of an inch. So this marker is right of this one. So you could have done it down here too and gone straight up, something like that. The body is tipped just a little bit. So now I'm gonna connect these two. This is gonna be a pointy end, this is gonna be a rounded end. And my body is no more than about three quarters of an inch wide. It's a little wider at the top than it is at the bottom. So I'm gonna take from here and then just kind of curve this top and then just bring it down into my tip and then do the same thing over on the right hand side. It doesn't have to be perfect, just something that's gonna guide you through that uh, painting process. And then what I'm gonna do is just make myself a little tiny curved shape up at the top, that'll be where, where the head is. So now we're gonna put the wings on. So again, I'm just gonna guide you through some markers and we'll, we'll, we'll connect them. So I'm gonna come a little bit down from um, my head and give myself two markers on either side of the body in through there. And then I'm gonna come down maybe about another inch, inch and a half, give myself another marker. These markers are kind of downward in motion and these kind of are going left to right. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to the center of my canvas and I'm gonna come down about one, two inches, somewhere in through here. This is gonna be the, the first wing that we're gonna do. We're gonna connect here to here, 
and here to here. So I'm gonna do the easy part first. I'm gonna take from here, just give myself a diagonal line, and then I'm gonna to start to curve it right here and go up. So I'm gonna curve it up to about here, which if you are in relationship to, this, to the center of your canvas, you're gonna be over from that probably about an inch and a half to two inches and then down maybe about a quarter to half of an inch. And then you can connect here to up here something like this. And it doesn't, again, doesn't have to be perfect. Just, you know, kind of if you wave it just a little bit, that'll make it look nice and natural. So then the next one that I'm gonna do is gonna come out from this corner in through here. And it's gonna be, go up into, it's gonna kind of hide behind this tail. So somewhere in through here, and it's gonna come down to about here. So if you go about an inch to the right, or half of an inch to the right and maybe down about an inch, inch and a half from here, you'll get yourself in about the same marker. And then you can connect these, curve it down at the bottom and then curve it back up like that. Then the next one I'm gonna have starting right about here. And it ends up, it's gonna uh, end up up in three. Well, actually, no, let's do, let's do the outside wing on this one first. So we gotta make this outside wing over here. So it'll be this one and this one. And then the tip of this is way out over here. So this one is open more than the rest of them are. So this is if you travel to the right of your tip of your tail. So travel to the right, 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 right until you're about uh, almost two inches away from the edge of the canvas. So I can take from here and I'm gonna curve it just a little bit to give me my um, top part of that wing. And then this one, as I come down in through here, I'm gonna come um, something like this and then start curving it right about in through here, like this, and then bring it up into there. This one is gonna be from here and it actually ends up right in through here. So it tucks behind this one. So I'm gonna take from here, just drop it down just a little bit and back up into there. And that's all I'm gonna be doing for the butterfly so we're going to move up to the to the leaf so again we, this is super duper close up on this butterfly and the leaf so it's really just about getting a nice um, organic shape to the edge of it so I'm going to do the bottom edge of the leaf first I'm going to come up to the left hand corner and come down maybe about two two and a half inches give myself a marker and then this is going to meet my um, my butterfly somewhere in through here. So from here to here, I can make just a nice long organic line. I'm gonna take it from up here, just kind of give myself a long dipping line in through here. Let's see, just trying to follow the silhouette of my photo that I'm looking at too. So maybe this comes down like this and then just kind of comes up and gives myself a little kind of fun edge to the leaf, something like this. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly like this. I'm just using a reference, a visual reference to guide me, but you can make yours in really whatever kind of shape you want. The top side of the leaf were actually, it kind of, part of it extends off of my canvas. So I'm gonna have um, like little peek a little peekaboo spot up and through here, but I'm gonna start down at this right hand side first to tell you where it's headed. So it actually cut, uh, goes right behind my, my butterfly's head a little bit and kind of ends up in through here. So I'm just gonna do a little skipped diagonal line on the other side of that um, butterfly's head so I know where I'm heading. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do is I'm coming back up to this top left-hand corner and I'm gonna come in maybe about a half of an inch and I'm gonna give myself this little kind of, uh, that's gonna be a little peekaboo spot in through there and then I'm gonna give myself another little kind of curved, messy area. That's another little peekaboo spot. I'm gonna come down from, from here, kind of right about in through here. And I'm gonna make a piece of the leaf up in through here that's gonna um, end up, the point of it's gonna be right here. So I'm gonna just take this and give myself this fun, kind of jagged, pointy little um, profile to this portion of the leaf. So that'll just be a little um, pointy part. And then the other pointy part, 
comes right behind our butterfly and through here. So from here to here, I can just have fun with um, a nice kind of jagged type of line. But again, I'm using a visual reference, so I'm gonna keep mine similar to the visual reference, but you can really have fun with making yours um, whatever kind of fun shape that you want. When you're doing stuff like this and you're learning the process of um, kind of giving it that natural type of look, learning the process is great because you can then adapt it to your own um, your own markings. So you could take this idea of drawing an outline for the leaf and make your own leaf, the, your own shape to the leaf, whatever way that you want. So once I have those two things done, that's all I'm gonna be doing for my outline. I will be using my medium round brush for the next step. So you can make any little fiddling adjustments that you want. Um, put your drawing utensil away, take out your medium round brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for our butterfly and our leaf. I'm using my number eight round brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are burnt sienna, white and yellow or raw sienna. <laughs> so I'm gonna be making two custom colors. I'm gonna be making what I'm gonna call just a light pink color for my butterfly and then a like a caramel type of color for the leaf. So I have pre-mixed my colors on my palette so you can see where I'm headed. So this is the light pink that I'm referring to for my butterfly. How I got to this is a lot of white and just a little tiny touch of burnt sienna. You could certainly use red as your um, coloring agent, but I, when I'm looking at this photo, I'm not seeing it super duper pink. It's just a really light, neutral, natural, muted kind of pink, so that's where I'm headed with my with my burnt sienna. So then I'm gonna just wash my brush so I can create my second custom color, which is right here. How I got to this color is burnt sienna and yellow, or burnt sienna and raw sienna. So I want to have a complementary color for my leaf because my leaf has all the colors in my background in it. So when I'm looking at this photo reference to um, try and get a base coat, I'm looking for the color that I'm seeing the most in the leaf, which is this caramel type of color, and I will be able to add all of the other accents and details on top of this. So instead of looking at the leaf and trying to figure out you know, every single color right off the bat. I'm just going for the color that I'm seeing the most in the leaf, and I'm gonna use that as my base coat. So I've got that now, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna color it in. I'm gonna go slow around this little head so I can have a little spot over in through here, and then keep the shape of the head and the body of my um, butterfly. And you're gonna notice that as I'm painting this, it is really, similar to everything that's behind it. So if you're if you're going through this process and you're saying, oh, I, I just can't, I don't know where the edges of my leaf are gonna be, just leave a little bit of your outline evident. So as you're going through the painting process, you know where those edges are. We will be manipulating those edges and giving them lots more detail, which will allow them to be more visible on the, um, on the canvas and the in the photo reference a lot of these areas that are along the edges are either in the shadow so they'll end up darker or they're in the light so they'll end up lighter but again this is just the dominant color that kind of transcends throughout the entire leaf so that's why I'm opting to use it as my base coat. Even up and through here, in my, in my reference, this is a dark area of my, of my leaf. However, I want to be able to have natural gradations when I go to um, do that leaf. So for me, starting it all with one color is gonna help me um, make it look a little bit more natural and um, help my painting process be easier for me because that's the way I like to do it. So then I'm gonna just go right to the edges of my outline. And again, 
I'm, I'm keeping the evidence of my outline um, slightly there for a couple of different reasons. One, so I don't get lost in my painting process. Um, and so I can continue to know where I wanted those edges to be. And two, I have a tendency of making my objects bigger <laughs> if I don't remember where my guideline was. So if I can't see my guideline and I'm going through my painting process, it, my object might grow because I might just keep painting around that, you know, past that edge if I don't know where it is. So I do have a tendency of kind of leaving um, a little evidence of my edges until I'm confident that I don't need them anymore. <laughs> and if you do have some streaking in your, um, in your leaf right now on this first coat, again, it's just the first coat. We don't need it perfect. We just are looking for something that's going to help us um, build those details on top of it. So once I've got my leaf done, I'm going to move right on to my butterfly. Just get make sure I don't have any super duper thick spots in through here. It looks pretty good. And then I'm going to uh, wash and dry my brush. And I'm going to use that custom light pink color for my butterfly. And again, this is the same the same thought process. Leave some of the evidence of your um, of your guidelines, so you know where those uh, where those wings meet, so you know where the body meets. And again, this was the common color that I was seeing in the um, butterfly. And you're gonna on camera, it's probably looking pretty darn white or light. It, it is very light. But once we start adding the other accents, this pink will emerge as a pink tone once we put it next to something lighter or of a different shade. If you were to look at my palette right now, you'll notice that this pink that I'm using sitting next to the white on my palette, you can clearly see the difference between the two. So once I start adding other tones to this, the pink hue that it is will be more visible. And again, it is super subtle in the photo, this, this hue of pink. So if you did want yours to be more um, visible, you could certainly add more of the burnt sienna. You could certainly add some paint or uh, some red to make it look more traditionally pink. But again, I'm being steered and guided by this photo reference. So I am I'm going with what I see in the photo. So that's good for there. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this interior. And it didn't matter what order I did these. Uh, I painted these sections in because, again, we're just doing the base coat. And if I, you know, bumped into one when I was doing the other, it's all right. This is not a super important step to have to micromanage or do anything um, really exact on. We just need to get this base coat on here so we have a building block for the next step. And that's, you know, primarily when I'm painting and my process is, I have a building process. I think, I think of it like a house that, that, you know, you need your framework on there. You need certain things in order to, um, have that house nice and sturdy. So for me, doing these base coats and getting a solid foundation down into that that composition not only makes it a really um, fully composed piece of artwork, but it also helps the construction process go smoother because there's a process, because you have an order that you typically take. And you don't have to take the same order as I take, but finding your own um, rhythm and process where by every painting you do X, Y, and Z before, or A, B, and C before you do X, Y, and Z, it makes that, that entire process go smoother, more consistent, more easier, and it, again, it makes for a, a fully rendered all the time type of um, image. So now that I've got that done, I am going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is the second step on the leaf. 
I'm gonna be using my number eight round brush. What this step is gonna entail is we're going to be putting all of the gradients into the leaf so it looks like it's kind of three-dimensional. And we're gonna start this, the um, main kind of stem to the leaf with its main veins. We'll come back on step three for the leaf to do the final little details with a smaller brush. But this is in essence to put in any big shadows, any big areas that are in the light versus in, in the um, dark areas and to give it any kind of gradient that we might want. So in this step, I am definitely gonna be using brown, burnt sienna, yellow, and I might also use a touch of red and or a touch of black. Um, and if I go into any other colors, I'll let you know, because I might use white too. <laughs> and I might use caramel, <laughs> but I'm not gonna use pink, I can tell you that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find myself my darker areas um, and kind of start there and work my way to the light. So I have a main stem or the, just the main center structure to the leaf that kind of comes right down the center. One part of it is gonna be really light and the other part's gonna be really dark because it's gonna have a lot of 3D quality to it. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of brown to start and put that line in place. So I'm gonna be about almost halfway between here and here, somewhere in through here, and I'm gonna meet it somewhere in through here on my butterfly. And I, and I wanted to have a slight curve to it, so just gonna kind of give myself a long kind of sketcherly line in through here. This will represent the dark side of this. <laughs> and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out however far I feel it needs to go. So there's gonna be um, this little area in through here gets shadowed as well. So I'm gonna put this brown right on this area in through here like this, just getting it to to blend in there. And you can have yours really um, firm with your, I lost my paper towel, hold on a second. Let me just go over here, got it now. Um, you can have your lines really um, firm, but I'm gonna have mine kind of blending into each other. So I've got it dark here, and then I have it just kind of blending into that main color. This one can remain pretty dark because that's gonna be a shadow of the, the stem itself, but I think I want it a little bit wider, so I just put picked up a little bit more brown paint on my brush to get it a little bit wider so it's not so skinny, and then um, it's gonna go even wider in through here. So this whole area is gonna get a pretty big shadow too. So I can take it from right in through here. Again, more brown on my brush. And take in through here. And then this is where it's gonna kind of um, have a little bit of a gradient. I'm gonna bring it right kind of into this area in through here and then just kind of rub it towards that right. And it'll get a little bit lighter and kind of blend into um, my original color that I had put on there. And if you run into trouble, that's when you would pick up some of that caramel color. So if you're doing this and you're like, oh, it's just, it's too much, I, I can't get it to blend, that's when you pick up some of that original color and get it to blend a little bit easier. So there's gonna be another shadow up in through here that's gonna kind of cross, um, maybe at all. I think I wanna pull this maybe a little bit to write it in through here. It's gonna cross over this little empty spot in through here, so like that, and then bring this somewhere in through here. And then this is all pretty dark in through here. I'm gonna have some bright highlight along the edge of the leaf later, but right now, just kind of getting it to be nice and dark in through here. This, I might actually put a little bit of black in here too, um, this back little corner here so I can make it really, really dark. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black just to get this really dark back in through here. Just give it as much dimension as I can. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to, and I just keep wiping my brush off on my paper towel, get this to be a little bit more of a gradient. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna put some shadow up in through here, so just picking up some uh, brown again. This is gonna be this whole kind of upper side of this leaf in through here. And as I uh, develop these darker shadowy areas, you'll begin to see the contours of the 
of the leaf start to start to take shape. And again, we're going to have um, a nice kind of oh, there's a there's a vein that comes in through here too. Hold on, let me just kind of mark this off here. It kind of comes like this. So it's a pretty big one too. So just marking it in through there. Um, you'll see how these gradients really start to give the the uh, the leaf a lot of um, form and and shape, which is which is really fun when you can learn how to do these these type of tricks in order to get it to to look like it's bending over to look like it's got um, some movement to it, it it begins to be a really fun experience when you've got the when you can pull out these you know really cool tricks so that looks pretty good i've got a couple areas that i want to look like they've got some um, veins started so i'm going to go brown and burnt sienna on my brush i've got a little one um, in through here just kind of giving myself a couple of darker little darker marks um, that are going to show a little bit of darkness, but maybe not as much darkness as I had um, put with the brown. So this is uh, burnt sienna with a little bit of brown left on my brush. I've got a little vein going in through here. And again, it doesn't have to be, yours does not have to be exactly as mine. Just make it whatever way is comfortable for you. This whole little edge right here is getting a little bit more burnt sienna on it. And again, when we do our final details, these edges that are almost disappearing because they're so similar to that background color, they will pop even more once I get that um, last, ver that, those final details on it. Right now I'm just picking up Burnt Sienna to get my next light or my next darkest areas uh, accomplished. Just picking up a little bit more Burnt Sienna. This is gonna um, tie these shadows, kind of give it a better transition into the lighter area. So it's a little burnt sienna there. I'm gonna put a little burnt sienna connecting this guy in through here. There's another dark shadow or dark uh, vein right in at the end of this section I'm doing right now. I'll show you in a second here. That looks pretty good. I'm uh, picking up some brown to show you where this vein is. It kind of travels right along here. So again, I'm going for the details that I'm seeing in um, this photo, but you could of course modify yours. I just picked up some more burnt sienna to get this little shadow in through here to transition into the um, what's going to be the lightest yellowy kind of area. So just go going from one color to the next, if you can do it in a progressive way, that's going to, again, allow for those more natural looks. So now I'm gonna pick up my yellow. So my yellow is gonna be the lightest areas, and I want it to transition into that burnt sienna area. So it, um, where these veins are, the lighter side of the vein is gonna be the top side. So that's gonna be right in through here. And again, I will make this look more, um, like it blends better on that final step. But right now, just really wanna get um, these, the, the start of it. So again, this is my yellow that I'm using. So it's gonna be pretty firm when it meets this shadow. And then I'll, I'll get it to blend out out in the in the main area so this dark shadow right here is going to represent the shadow of the vein <laughs> so it's it's fun when you can you know start to dissect the anatomy of these these type of um, things these type of objects and you can get them to really have um, some fantastic dimension so I have this vein here so I know that there's going to be a, a lighter area that comes on top of that, so like that. And you can use this, this thought process that I'm showing you for these veins on the leaves. You can also use that for veins on a person too. <laughs> so know that there's um, you know, some continuity when it comes to learning certain things. You can, you can put that same, um, that same lesson into other aspects, other, other things. So if you're doing something with veins, it doesn't matter if it's a leaf, it doesn't matter if it's a horse's leg, it doesn't matter if it's a human's, you know, hand, it could be really anything um, with veins in it and you can use that same, the same 
process that I'm showing you here. And again, this is just the second step. We'll be adding um, a third step to this in a little bit, but we just get a little bit more yellow up in through here. And if you felt that you wanted any additional colors to get to, to pop, more on this. You could certainly add red if you wanted to. I don't necessarily want mine to um, fight with the background, so I think I'm going to uh, not put too much red if at all. I might in that final step, but right now I think I'm not going to use any red at all. I think this is going to be a good um, start to my leaf, so we are going to be using... Um, I think I want to finish the leaf, so we're going to use our small brush for the next step so you can just get it out and get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the leaf. I'm using my small number two round brush. The colors that I think I'm going to be using are definitely white, uh, yellow, and uh, burnt sienna, and I might go into my caramel, I might go into brown, I might go into red, but I will call them all out as I use them, but definitely those first initial ones. So I'm looking to finesse it, make sure that I have all of my highlights exactly where I want them. I want these veins to pop out more. I wanna add a couple more tiny veins and I want to definitely get the edges of my leaf to um, really uh, pop out. In the um, photo that I'm looking at, this whole area in through here, it all, I mean, it really looks like 3D along these edges. So I'm going to try and capture that um, even up in through here. I've got a nice little 3D edge to it. And anywhere that I need additional contrast so I can see the edge of that leaf on top of the background, I'm going to inject that. So what I mean by that is an area like this where these are all very similar in tonal value, it, if I take away my chalk mark, you're going to hardly see that edge. So I need to add either a darkness to the leaf along the edge or a lightness, something that's going to contrast more against that background if I want to see that edge. So those are the things that I'm going to be working on in this step and also smoothing it out if I feel I need to smooth it out any. So first things first, I'm going to make sure all my dark areas are as dark as I want them. So, oh, and I'm using brown too. I don't know if I said I was using brown, but I'm using brown. <laughs> I'm using brown right off the bat. So I'm going to make sure all my dark areas, and this is where I'm going to close off my edges too, my chalk marks. I don't need them anymore. This is my final step here. So I'm taking my brown and making sure that I have these edges as dark as I want them to be or as visible as I want them to be. I'm bringing it right up to my, um, to my chalk mark. And if you don't want to go up to your chalk mark, that's okay. Just leave it and you can erase it um, with a little bit of water once, once your paint has dried. In through here, I actually want this to transition into lighter edges, so I'm going to leave that alone for a second. I just want to hit my dark stuff right now. I just picked up more of my um, brown. I'm going to get this whole area in through here, making sure that I've got this edge really nice and dark. Uh, I'm thinking right down to about in through here. And then I can just kind of blend it up, make sure that it's blended in with that upper section that it needs to be. I'm going to pull this also, this edge down in through here. So this is another area right here where I have dark next to dark. So I need to do something. So I think I'm actually going to pull a little bit of red into this area. So this is one of those times where I, I wasn't sure if I was going to use red, but I don't want this edge to go too light. So I can get a little contrast in there with a touch of red on my brush. So that, that took care of that for me. And then just making sure that I've got it blended so it doesn't look like it's an obvious, hey, you just put red here and you're not, you know, and it doesn't blend in with the rest of what you've done. So something like that works out for me. I, this is pretty good up in through here, but I definitely want to just kind of put another layer so it looks a little smoother in through here. So that looks pretty good um, in through here. I'm going to hit this with a little bit of um, brown and uh, my uh, burnt sienna, so brown and burnt sienna, just to get another layer on in through here because it was a little, a little um, too scratchy looking for me. So I just wanted another layer with a little bit of smoothness to it. So 
brown and burnt sienna helped me out in through there. I'll hit that in a minute. Just want to kind of go around my edges with some darkness. Uh, up and through here, this is pretty good. This whole edge up here is going to get a really light um, application of color. So I just want to uh, make sure my darks are as dark as I want them. Uh, right in this little corner here, I could get this to go a little darker too, just to amp up that edge in through there and along this little edge right here. I'm using just a little bit of brown to uh, deepen this color of this edge again so we can see it. And I don't need to go too far, just, just blend it into whatever color is next to it. Same thing with these edges right here. I can put, uh, again, I'm just using brown right now. I can use my brown and just almost outline these edges to give them their nice points and to um, give myself a nice dark silhouette in through here so you can really see this uh, and you can reshape like I, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking I want it just pointy out that way so just kind of made a little point and again if you can't see it enough I could add here we go adding a color add a touch of black right to that little tip right in through there not a lot just something that will allow that viewer to to see that edge I'm thinking that this is pretty good in through here because I'm going to have um, a bright edge onto that one. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to um, make sure that any additional areas, I got those edges in through there. I'm going to um, pick up a little bit of burnt sienna and brown just to soften this dark area in through here, similarly to how I did over here, um, just for my own visual purposes. That looks pretty good. And if I feel that there's any other little dark areas within the leaf that I want to kind of um, manipulate right now, I can certainly do that or uh, make a little bit softer. So I'm going with a little bit of brown and burnt sienna to hit some of these, um, these areas that I feel need another little layer on them. Uh, but again, you could certainly use any any color combination you want. I think that this looks pretty good in here, but maybe a little bit more burnt sienna just to smooth it out just a little bit. And again, you know, you don't necessarily have to take it as far as I'm taking it. Now I'm gonna use a touch of burnt sienna and brown and a little bit of water on my brush to um, tell me where the rest of my little veins are gonna go. So I have um, a little vein kind of, oh, I need a little bit more brown so you guys can see it little vein coming here and again it doesn't have to be exactly where where uh, where I'm putting them I'm just putting them where I'm seeing them in the um, in the photo reference this one's going to come down somewhere in this vicinity I don't I just want it to be pretty subtle for these littler ones something like that and you can even just blend it out a little bit and then I've got this one which has already started that looks pretty good maybe I think there's another little one in through here that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to start adding my, my lighter tones. I definitely need some a, a good amount of my yellow, um, but there's going to be areas where I'm going to want to add some additional white to it as well. So I'm going to show you my yellow with white, especially on this bright, bright area in through here. So I have this vein right in through here that I definitely want to be pretty darn light and bright. So this is yellow and white on my brush to get it to go as light as I want. And if, you, if you're doing this and you're saying, oh, that's just too light, you can certainly darken it um, as, as it, after it dries. But where I say don't be afraid of the dark, don't also don't be afraid of the light. So the more contrast that you have, I'm I'm rubbing out the side that meets the um, that meets the actual leaf part. Um, the more contrast that you have, the more it's going to have those 3D type of elements to it. The more it's going to read as um, lifelike. So again, don't be afraid to add those those high contrasting kind of colors and I oftentimes will will build these colors on top of um, a darker base so that way I know that they're going to take on the color that's underneath them I think I'm actually switching to my caramel color right now because as I'm going into these other ones I want them to 
not be as yellow and bright as that one. So this is Caramel Plus uh, White on my brush right now to give a little bit different tone in some of these uh, veins as they're going away from that brightest of the bright spot. And I put the vein on there and then you can just kind of blend it out into the rest of that leaf. And again, it doesn't have to be the same as mine. I just picked up some more of the caramel to come over here on these edges. I think I am going to um, uh, put kind of a, like an orangey type of hue in this as well in a little bit um, to take on some of the, uh, the, the red and the yellow together so it harmonizes it a bit better so it's not so, um, so drastic of, of um, shifts in color here. So I want to make sure that I've got all of those um, places kind of talking together. So I'm still right now caramel and, and white to um, kind of dull down that yellow. That was a bit too uh, yellow for me. So now it's okay for me to have it super bright right in this main area, but as I'm kind of working my way out and wanting these more subtle um, shifts in these veins, I don't want it to be too, 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 too white uh, or too, too yellow. So I'm just kind of putting these little uh, pops on here and rubbing it with my finger, which is, you know, a super great way to paint, <laughs> but you can do it whatever way that you want. I think I'm going to, in a minute, start to use, uh, this is the caramel still, start to use a little bit of um, maybe a red and yellow type of a combination. So it gives me a little bit of an orangey type of tone. So I'm thinking that that's pretty good right now. Um, I'm going to stick a little bit more of my yellow in through here. You'll see what's going to happen in a second. So I'm actually going to make an orange. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to get to that orange by yellow, good amount of yellow, a teeny touch of red. So just a teeny touch because the red will really overpower it. Just a teeny touch of red, something like this. That's a little bit too red. Going to go a little bit more yellow. And this is going to be pretty similar to the um, caramel, but it's going to have more of a red, you know, of an orangey kind of tone to it. So this is looking pretty good to me. So I'm going to use this as um, additional kind of color accent. Mm, a little bit more red will. I need a little bit more red in there. There we go. So a, additional kind of color accents on these veins. And again, this is one of those processes as you're as you're doing yours, you know, you might find that you want yours to be even more, you know, like you want a little bit more red in it. So if I pick up a little bit more red, I can get little um, like red kind of speckles in my leaf in through here if I wanted to. So just feel once you've got the whole um, gist of where, where you want these um, colors and the highlights and stuff, then you can start manipulating these little edges and corners. But I do need some of these edges to be nice and bright. So I am going to use this, um, I'm going to call it light orange color right now on some of these edges, maybe with a little bit of white. So light orange plus white and any combination thereof and just popping the um, bright little marks on the edges of these leaves just to give it Again, a little bit of a 3D type of look to it, and a, you can use it in any color combination that you want, but right now I'm, I'm using multiple colors on my brush, so I've got my um, that light orange plus maybe a little bit of red just to give me um, the ability to make these uh, little 3D edges to it. Pop a little bit of white on your brush every now and again to get um, an even brighter type of look to it, and you don't have to do the entire edge. So as you're going through your process, if you if you feel one edge, you know, you don't want to do, don't do it. That's going to, you know, it if you're seeing it at different angles, you would see these these little pops of the edges from different angles, which would which would make it look different depending on what angle you're looking at it from. So I just put a little bit of red on my brush to get this one to, to pop and through there. And again, I'm just looking for contrasting colors around where um, where it meets um, those those background colors. So something like that. And then I would I mean, this is looking pretty good to me right now. I'd probably um, maybe enhance in through here just so we can see this guy a little bit more and 
your safety color is that caramel. That's that's where we started. So as you're going through your process, if you're saying, um, you know, I did too much here or not enough there, just revert to that caramel color. That's going to help you um, kind of go start from scratch if you need to. I just picked up a little bit of burnt sienna to get this to to go a nice transition in through there. And then maybe a little bit of my light orange to lighten up this corner in through here. So at this point, I'm just in my fiddling stages because I know where I want my, I know where my veins are. I know where my edges are. I know where I want my brightest spots to be. So now I'm just sitting and saying, okay, well, do I want this little corner to be a little bit brighter? Do I want this to be a little bit more yellow? Do I want this to be a little bit whiter or darker or anything? So that's gonna be my process. Um, what I'm gonna do for the next step is I am gonna be using, um, what brush am I gonna use for the next step? I think I'm gonna use my number eight for the next step. So fiddle with your um, leaf as much as you want, make it lighter, darker, add more burnt sienna, add more red, whatever works for you. Um, and then you can put this brush away, take out your, um, your medium round, and, <laughs> and I'm not gonna stop, no, I, I will stop and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the second step to our butterfly. I'm gonna be using my number eight round. The colors that I'm gonna use are burnt sienna, white, my light pink, and brown and black. And what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be adding the um, dominant kind of markings on the wings and on the body. And then we'll come back in a future step and add uh, the, um, the fine-tuned little veins and we'll add our face and antennas and legs and those kind of good things. So I'm going to be doing a directional brush stroke, kind of striping on these uh, color variations in order to give myself um, the, the beginning of the, of the color pattern. I'm gonna first start by um, adding some little value changes on these tips um, where in the picture I see that the, the wings and stuff are a little bit darker as they meet the body and at the tips, these outer tips. So I'm gonna take some of my light pink and burnt sienna on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna take right from up and through here and I'm just going to give myself these kind of little streaks coming away from the body so again this is burnt sienna and my pink and I'm just pulling it kind of away from the body so this is going to give me uh, a little bit of a color shift that is going to be a little bit darker where it meets the body and a little bit lighter coming into here I'm going to put that right in um, this little spot too. So just a little bit in through here, just so we can have some nice dimension to the, um, to the, to the butterfly. And so that tail can pop out nice. I'm going to also do this onto the, on the little tips of these outer, um, wings. So something like this, and I'm just getting it to kind of fade into that pink. So you don't need to do much to it. Just allow for it to um, it looks like it's kind of on these little guys too and through here just allow it to kind of merge into that um, that lighter pink so again this is burnt sienna plus the light pink I'm going to do a section over here oops that needs a little more burnt sienna in through here and then again kind of come down this little tip in through here and then just pulling it up and blending it into the main pink area I'm going to pick up a little bit of, um, I've already forgotten the colors I was going to tell you to use, but I'm going to pick up some brown paint with a tiny bit of black and white. So brown, black, and white are going on my brush. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a dotted type of texture 
on the on the body part and maybe up a little bit at that neck area in through here. I'm gonna leave a couple of little light areas just on the left and right of that main um, section of the top part of the body. And then I'm just kind of tapping this down. So again, this was brown, black, and white. And I'm just giving myself this uh, textural element of almost like polka dot type element coming down in through here. And as I come down about halfway down that body, it gets more slender. Um, where the dark area is kind of more in a concentrated area down uh, like the right-ish side <laughs> um, and then just maybe a couple of little polka dots over on the left and the right. And again, we will fine tune this in a future step, but I'm thinking that that's pretty good for the start for that one. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush because I don't want, uh, I don't want that, those dark colors that were on my brush to taint what I'm going to do next. So I washed and dried my brush. Now I'm gonna take my pink and white. So pink and white, and I'm gonna give myself some nice streaks, primarily in this center area, but you can overlap. And, and this is my directional brush stroke. So I'm kind of curving it with um, that outside curve of the, of the um, wing, so something like this. And I, you can overlap that area that you just did a little bit, but I wouldn't go too much into it, just making sure that I, it looks like I have a full, a nice full layer to the, um, to the wing. So that looks pretty to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it um, on this little section underneath here. So again, this is just my pink plus a little bit of white. So this area is a little bit trickier because it's underneath. And again, I'm just kind of taking it down in the these streaks like that. So something like that works. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the other wing. So pink plus my white, and then just giving myself these little streaks. And of course, when you're in like this one, just kind of giving it, again, that curve. That's just, I think what's gonna make it a little bit more natural is when you can add uh, that, um, that natural type of curve to it. So something like this, and just giving myself that curve. And if you want more drama to it, you can certainly add more white. You can add more more contrast. So your pink could be pinker. Your, you could even use a little bit of the burnt sienna in through here if, if you wanted to have more diversity in those colors. Um, but you might be able to accomplish that also in our final step when we do the little details. I'm gonna go ahead and do um, this side. Again, I've got my pink plus my white on my brush and just giving myself a whole bunch of little streaks. They don't have to be the same. They don't have to be coming off exactly at the same angle, just something that's gonna give us our second coat and um, provide us with a place to start the, um, the little details that we're gonna do in and a future step. So that looks good. And then for the next step, I'm gonna be using my small brush. So once you've got this done, you can put this brush away, take out your small detail brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our butterfly. I'm using my number two round. The colors I'm gonna use are uh, probably all. <laughs> no, I'm gonna use black, brown, white, uh, my caramel color um, and maybe burnt sienna and my pink. If I use any other color, I'll let you know. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna finish my body, my head, I'm gonna put on a couple of legs, a couple of antennas, and we're gonna finish the wings with some decorative kind of dots and veins and all that good stuff. So I think I'm gonna first finish the, um, the head and put on some antennas and legs. I'm gonna pick up some of my caramel color. I'm putting a little bit of water in it just so I have it uh, pretty fluid. And I'm gonna dot this color kinda on the top of the back and I'm gonna bring it right up into um, the, the center of the head and through here just to give it um, this 
particular butterfly kind of looks fuzzy to me. <laughs> like he's got some soft fur around the head and, and the back in through here. So I'm just taking that color and dotting it, dotting it in. I'm also going to use this color to start my, um, my antennas. So, uh, my antennas are going to come kind of just out from the head in through here. They're pretty darn long. And for some reason in this photograph, one of them looks longer than the other one and has an extra special thing on the end. So I don't know if um, something happened to this little butterfly's um, antennas, but we're gonna make them the way that they are in the photo. So that way, you know, we give this little, this little butterfly its due, um, it's due process with its own uniqueness because we are all unique in our own way. So even little butterflies, they can have their own unique um, appearance to them. So the left one's longer <laughs> than the right one. Maybe there's something on it, like maybe it caught something along the way. So I'm gonna just let that dry for a second. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white with my caramel color right now to do my legs. So I'm only seeing two legs on the left hand side of the body and the top one is kind of hanging on to this piece of the leaf right here. So it's gonna come out right about in through here out the body and it hooks right over that little leaf in through there, which is super cute to me. He's like hanging on like that. And then the other one comes out somewhere in this vicinity and it has a little bit of a bend like right in through here and then it kind of comes up something like like this so it's got a little foot on it something like that we're going to put a shadow under it in a minute but i just wanted to get those on there get them in their drying process before we add any little details to them i'm gonna now um wash my brush and i'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of black and put a couple of little eyes on the side of the head. So just somewhere on the side of the head, you can pop out a couple of little dark marks in through here, Give get, make sure this little guy can see. And anywhere else now that I need black, I'm gonna use it because I've got it on my brush. I can add a couple of little um, black polka dots in through this back area and just polka dotting it in order to give it a lot of texture. Um, I'm going to come down this back, little bits of black in through here. It looks like the light source might be a little bit on the right because we're going to have a shadow underneath the tail here. And it looks like the, the, the left side of the body is a little bit darker as well. So I'm using that um, information to my benefit and I'm just going to make this left side of the body a little bit darker than the right side. I'm going to start picking up brown on my dirty brush now because I don't want this to go too, too dark. So I just um, picked up a little bit of brown to add to this fluffy textural element. This is going to come down uh, about halfway. Let's see, this, my tail, from my tail to up here, I'm going to bring this color, this dark color down about halfway on this left hand side, something like this. And then it just kind of trails kind of over to the right. And again, I'm still just polka dotted, polka dotting. We had that original um, uh, color pattern that we had done. Now this is just kind of enhancing it a little bit, uh, allowing for it to finish the the uh, the texture of it. And then that looks pretty good. I'm going to. Um, Oh, I didn't need to wash my brush. I'm going to go and do my other dark stuff. So I'm picking up a little bit more brown and just a touch of black, not much black at all. There's some, um, a couple of polka dot type um, marks on the, on the wings and through here. So I'm going to just kind of tap it. Um, these, <laughs> I don't know how old you are, whoever you are watching me right now, but um, in, when I was a teenager, they had Atari, which was a little video game, and they had this game Asteroids, and these little marks on this butterfly remind me of the little asteroid characters. <laughs> so uh, when I saw this butterfly, I'm like, oh my god, it so looks like those little characters that were in the video game, but you know, I'm just showing you how old I am, I guess. <laughs> and then I'm just kind of, kind of make these little guys over in through here. And again, this is black and brown on my brush right now, allowing for myself to have this little bit of a textural 
type of um, appearance in these. And again, I'm just kind of tapping it, trying to keep it in a similar shape that it is um, in the photo. But again, it, yours does not need to be. This is just one of those things. Because I'm teaching you this specific photograph, I'm trying to give you pretty similar markings, pretty similar placement and all that good stuff. But if you want to just kind of be a lot freer with yours and make it into whatever you want it to be, that's totally up to you. I'm just making a couple little darker marks in through here. There is also a little bit of polka dotty type of action over on the corners, but I feel it's more brown than it is um, black. So I just washed my brush and now I picked up some brown and it it's like these little tiny itty bitty polka dots over a kind of trance lading on top of that um, burnt sienna area that we had put. So just kind of little, little itty bitty polka dots allowing for it to translate pretty similarly to how it is in the photo. But again, not necessary if you don't want to take yours that far. I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. So it's a pretty similar pattern in through here. I suppose you could be using a, a bigger brush for these larger areas where there is quite a bit of the polka dotting. Um, but again, that's going to be, that'll be your call if you want to use a different brush. I'm just kind of tapping, tapping the tip of my brush. And if you, if you do it and you're like, whoa, I just did too much, just, um, kind of, you can let it dry and then you can come back and overlap it with your, um, with your pink color or the burnt sienna. It looks like there might be a little bit of dotting actually all along the edge. I'm noticing a little bit of this brown dotting all along the edge of the wings as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pop in little tiny polka dots all along the edges of these wings. And when I'm doing butterflies or anything that has these kind of seemingly complicated color patterns to them, I'm really just looking for common, common denominators as I'm going through um, the wings or these color patterns, if you will. I'm going to also go up top. This is going to be brown and black. There's some um, polka dotting stuff kind of happening, right? Coming out of the body and through here onto the wings. So very faint to me, looks like these polka dots up and through here, but I do still detect them. So I'm just kind of really lightly tapping my brush in order to um, get the illusion of what I'm seeing in the, in the photo. So again, just hardly tapping my brush, allowing for this to translate as such. I definitely want these to look different than that body. So I might have to actually put more in that body so the body looks a little bit fluffier and less polka dotty. So I'm just kind of rubbing my remnants of my brush on that part in through there. And then again, a little bit more polka dotty stuff coming down in between these wings. So I'm just, again, I'm just following what I'm seeing in the, in the photo. I will uh, it looks like there's going to be some stripy little veins as well, which I will put those in, on in a minute. But I'm going to put these polka dots on here and then I'm going to let it while it's drying. We'll go and finish that um, the face and the antennas and then we'll come back and give a final pass on here. There's also going to be a little shadow in between um, these uh, uh, underneath the tail, too. I think that's looking pretty good. I feel like I've got enough of these polka dotty things to make it believable in my opinion, my visual opinion. That looks pretty good. So I'm also right now gonna wet my brush and just kind of streak down a couple of faint veins. So I just wet my brush a little bit and I'm just gonna um, streak down a couple of, let's see, this one kind of comes out in through here. So the veins are gonna come from kind of that top body part and I'm putting water on my brush so I can really just pull these transparent kind of thin lines. Um, and again, when I go to uh, come back and put my little shadowy um, marks on and stuff, if I need to do any more of these, I certainly will, but I'm just kind of carefree allowing for these to just kind of um, make their way in here a little bit, very faintly. This little couple darker marks in through there. That looks pretty good. And then a couple up top in through here. I, I find it, um, you know, very kind of cathartic when you're doing this kind of stuff to, you know, just uh, fi finding the, the life in these, um, in these little, these little kind of, um, insects and, um, 
you know, n nature, mother nature's kind of creatures that we don't see all the time. Like I've never seen this kind of butterfly. I don't even know if it's a butterfly or a moth or where it's from in this world, but I just, you know, I get educated when, when doing these, these paintings, learning how, uh, you know, all of these different aspects can kind of come together using similar painting techniques that I might be using on an object that I paint all the time, you know, so it's really fun. So now I'm going to go, I'm washing, dry my brush. I'm going to go back up top, finish those antenna and face. I'm putting a little bit of black paint on my brush. This antenna piece has um, kind of this big black, like bubbly part at the top, whereas this one doesn't, but they both have kind of these little dark marks throughout them. So I'm going to just kind of poke it out down these little tiny black dots. And then conversely, I'll be putting some light dots in there too, just to give these a uh, little bit of dimension. This guy right here has a dark little hand, <laughs> dark butterfly hand. So I just put a tiny bit of black in through there. That, there's also two shadows from these legs. So I'm gonna put um, brown on my brush with a little bit of water. I already have a little bit of watered down brown paint on my palette. So I'm gonna put a shadow on my leaf just kind of almost straight down from here and then i'm going to put a shadow from this guy looks like it's kind of just almost straight down as well something like this kind of travel over that vein of the leaf which would be kind of cool that's going to give you um a real nice realistic effect there we go um i'm going to wash dry my brush i want to put some little highlights on that so i'm going to use my um white and my caramel color and just give myself it this one has a real bright kind of little pop at the tip and then i can just kind of dot down these little tiny highlights i don't it looks like the um these antennas have some really cool texture on them so we're just emulating that so again i i'm unfamiliar with this kind of butterfly and i'm just looking for those color patterns i'm i'm looking at my my reference and saying okay what am i seeing i'm seeing that there's these light polka dot kind of textural um shiny spots coming down the antenna so that's what i'm doing and i again don't know what it is or how it is you just paint it because that's what you know that's what you're seeing i'm seeing some little light spots on those eyes so we'll just oops that was way too aggressive <laughs> hold on black is going back on my brush get that little eye to re-emerge. Um, I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown too in the center of that head. That looks pretty good. And of course, if you felt that you wanted to do anything more on that head area, I'm actually gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna, I feel like I wanna put a little bit of yellow in there. So I just picked up some yellow. I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow on these edges in through here. You could even put a tiny bit of yellow and or white on those legs. So just picked up a little bit of white going to amplify this these legs a little bit so you could do yellow and or white whatever wherever your comfort is um, I'm doing them both on my brush at the same time yellow and white and then this little paw <laughs> foot <laughs> I'm putting brown that needs to go dark so there we go that looks cute um, I'm thinking that that's pretty good maybe a little bit more yellow and white just to fluff up these little guys right in through here and of course you could use your caramel color whatever um, works for you in through here just to get that to fluff out as much as you want I need a shadow underneath my um, underneath my body so I washed my brush I'm gonna pick up a little bit of um, burnt sienna and water because I feel like my burnt sienna is oh maybe a little brown too burnt sienna and brown and water um, this shadow is going to come right down in through here it's under my tail uh, let's see it's going to come down like this travels over this wing and I want it to really kind of read as um, that tail shape if I can so I just wanted it, I gave it a little bit of a point down into those, um, into those two wing meeting places in through there. That looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to pick up a little bit of white to just kind of um, uh, amplify the edge of this tail like that. That looks pretty good. And this is where I've got to start um, getting rid of my, of my guidelines. 
So I'm pretty, I pretty much have everything where I want. Now I just need to um, get rid of any guidelines and make any little fiddling or final uh, tweaks on these wings. So I feel as if I've got maybe a, a little bit of work I need to do in through here. So I'm going to pick up my pink and just make sure that all of my guidelines are are eliminated or um, disguised in any way that I need to. I also feel as if there's a couple areas that are not fully painted. So there's a couple of streaks in through here that I don't, uh, that need an, a little bit more attention. You can also enhance any of this with some more burnt sienna too. So if I pick up my burnt sienna and my pink, I can get little dark tones to occur in the tips around the edges, wherever you feel that you want a little more enhancement, you could either do the burnt sienna and, and pink and or you could use brown. You could even incorporate a little bit of white because I or uh, yellow because that, that would make it look like a little bit more of a um, of a light pastel -y type of um, color with maybe a little bit of sunshine in it. I'm going to show you what that would look like if I use a little bit of um, yellow and white and water just so it becomes more of like a glaze and not um, not a new color on it. So again yellow and white and and water. This will give you just another kind of streak of color in through here or hue without without saying I'm introducing a totally new color into this. It really is just going to give you another dimensional element to it. Um, if you want it to be lighter in certain areas, just bring a little bit more white into that, especially where it kind of um, feels like it would be seeing the sunshine the most. If you felt that you needed to reshape anything, now's the time to do it. I really liked that yellow and white addition, so I'm going to put just a little bit more maybe on this side. It just, um, it's making my painterly eye happy. So I'm gonna just add a little bit more in through there and maybe down into in through these guys in through here. And this is the stage where, you know, I've got my veins in place. If I want more polka dots, if I want more color variations, if I, if I feel that the, um, the, that I want it softer looking, all of those little additions or subtractions are, can, can occur now. So I've got everything in place. I've got all, everything is kind of looking really pretty to me. I'm going to put a little bit of that yellow and white maybe on the side of the body in through here. And if your body's not popping enough, you could pull in a different tone. So I could pull in that more of that caramel color and put it on the side of the body. So, and maybe a little bit of white. Um, just to uh, allow for the viewer to understand that this body is something different than the than the wing itself. Uh, if that wasn't enough, you can pull in a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit of red into it. So I just picked up a tiny bit of red. Again, this is just a uh, little information that will explain to the viewer that the body is something different than the um, than the wings. But if yours is translating as different and you don't have that um, issue, that's fine. You could also darken up your little area right next to the body. So a little bit of additional brown could allow for those, those polka dots to be more condensed and have more, um, more of, a, of a depth to them as they're meeting that body. And then you just do all your little fiddles. Any, any additional information that you feel would benefit you, you can certainly add to the equation. And then we are going to be using this small brush for the next step. So once you have your beautiful butterfly all nice and set, make any little adjustments that you feel might benefit you. And then you can um, wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm going to be using my small number two round brush. I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm going to go bottom left on this one with that caramel color that we created. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you, of course, can sign yours however you want. You can sign it with your 
full name. You, you could sign it just with your first name. You could sign it with a fun symbol. You could put it on the back. Whatever you want for your identifying mark is up to you because it's your painting and you get to make those kind of decisions all on your own. <laughs> and that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very beautiful autumn delicate butterfly and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.